Hello, and welcome to Brooklyn's Best Book Club. My name is Christopher Gambino, coming to you from Brooklyn's Best Bookstore at the corner of Bay Parkway, and don't you worry about it. So, what makes this Brooklyn's Best Bookstore? It's because we sell pizza also. Come on, come on down for a book, stay for a slice, all right? Not great pizza, but it's not bad. So what we're going to do in this book club is take a book off the shelf, give it a quick look, and I'll let you know if it's good or not. Behind me, I got The Monster of Florence. This speaks to me because I like monsters and I like Italy. And of course, this is by Mario Spezzi. Paisano, like myself, and Douglas Preston, some waspy guy, I'm pretty sure. This cover is awfully suggestive. That's not bad. I was hoping it was going to be about a Frankenstein or a werewolf, you know, uh, invading uh, uh, Florence, but uh, pro probably not, probably not. So let's 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 just open up a random page, give it a quick look. Well, by 1989, Perugini was closing in on Pacciani, but before he could hang the sign of monster around Pacciani's neck, the chief inspector had to explain how the gun used in the 1968 clan killing ended up in Pacciani's hands. He dealt with the problem in the simplest way possible. He accused Pacciani of committing the 1968 murders too. Whoa, this is not what I was expecting to find. I'm loving this already. Judge Mario Rotella, as the examining magistrate, had watched Perugini's investigation with dismay, viewing it as an effort to construct a monster out of thin air, using as a, stand, a starting point the conveniently brutal person of Pietro Pacciani. But the attempt to accuse Pacciani of the 1968 double homicide without a shred of evidence was going too far. It was a direct challenge to the Sardinian trial, uh, trail investigation. As examining magistrate, Rotella refused to sanction it. That's the right thing to do. Inspector Perugini was backed by two powerful supporters for his investigation of Pacciani. Vigna, the prosecutor, and the police. The Carabinieri backed Rotella. So we got a conflict right here. So about 124, 125 pages into this book, it's pretty good. All right, let's see if it gets uh, even better than this. I'm liking it so far. Hey, these chapters are really nice. Look at this, chapter 38, bam. 39, page later, I like it. As the monster investigation heated up, the phone calls from Maria became a regular occurrence. Did you read the papers this morning? He would ask me. Oh, that's Mario. That's not Maria. Did you read the papers this morning? He would ask me. Stranger and stranger. And we would enjoy another cup of coffee in my place, pouring over the news, shaking our heads. At the time, I found it all amusing, even charming. Spezzi was not so charmed. Wait a second. With Spe Is this like a real book? Like a, a non-fiction book? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Wow, check this out. There's like a map of Italy in here. Whoa. There's a lot of information in here that I kind of wish I knew, but this is pretty cool. All right. Spezzi wanted more than anything for the truth of the monster case to come out. His dedication to unmasking the monster was a passion. He had seen dead victims. I had not. He had met most of the families and seen the damage to them. I had wiped away a few tears on leaving Winnie Rotini's dark house. But Spezzi had been wiping away tears for more than 20 years. He had seen the lives of innocents ruined by false accusations. What I found deliciously peculiar and even quaint, he found deadly serious. 
To see the investigators wandering even deeper into a wilderness of absurdity pained him greatly. Wow. So, pretty cool book. You know, this is, uh, like I said, a non-fiction-y book. Douglas Preston fulfilled a lifelong dream when he moved with his family to a farmhouse in Florence. Upon meeting the celebrated journalist Mario Spezzi, Preston was stunned to learn that the olive grove next to his home had been the scene of a horrific double murder committed by one of the most infamous figures in Italian history, the monster of Florence. So he looks into it, wants to understand more. Very, very cool. This book, I give it a, an 8 out of 10. Give this, a, give this a shot. The monster of Florence is about a murder that some guy moves to Italy and finds a murder. Uh, I don't know where he's coming from. That'd be pretty cool, you know. It's like, oh, I moved out, I moved out of, uh, out of uh, you know, this one area where there was a lot of crime and then I moved into this other area where, surprise, there's a murder next door. But uh, pretty cool. All right, like I said, 8 out of 10, give it a shot. Come on by for a slice, grab a book, be well.